we have got to talk about like over 170 books in this video. I don't know how we're gonna do it. I'm hot already. Why the fuck am I wearing a sweater dress? <laughs> Hello friends! Today we have got such an exciting video. We are finally going to do the video of all my owned TBR, all my unread books. Um, so... <laughs> are you comfortable? I'm scared. Are you scared? Yeah, good. You should be. I have wanted to do this video for literally forever to give you a definitive list of all the unread books that I own. But when I do wrapped up the series where I've wrapped up some of my books, I can't do it because some of my books are wrapped up. However, next month in November will be the last episode of the wrapped up that we've been doing. Wrapped up as we know it is finished and it'll be getting a revamp in December. So I am now in a position to do this video. This video is gonna be very important because inspired by Becca and the books who does something similar, I'm gonna add two prompts to TBR Cluedo. Two will have to get the cut that already exists. I don't know what two they're gonna be yet. Me to all the TBR Cluedo prompts to decide which ones to get rid of. The time has come. You to lip sync for your Life. I want you guys to watch this video and leave in the comments. Comments are starting with either love it or hate it so I can scan the comments and one prompt will be to read a book that you guys have recommended in the comments of this video and one prompt will be to read a book that you guys have recommended not to read in the comments of this video. So yeah make sure you leave comments down below for whatever book you want me to read or you don't think I should read because then that will be a prompt in TBR Cluedo. So we've got a lot of books to talk about. If you've watched these videos before you know people typically don't say anything about the works because <laughs> it's like hundreds of books to talk about you can't really say anything so I'm just gonna be saying the names of them I've separated them into their genres when I watch other people's like I'm so nosy I find it so interesting it doesn't bother me that they don't say anything about the books but in my head I'm like people are gonna be so bored but before we get any further into the video and start talking about the books I want to thank the sponsor for today's video, which is Skillshare. So I've been recommending Skillshare for a long time. Those of you who watch my videos will know. I've used Skillshare since I was like 13. I think it's like the coolest platform. I love learning new things and I think learning new things is such a fun thing to do. So I always really recommend them. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes. They have classes on illustration, photography, writing, organization, filming, drawing, like everything you can imagine there is a class on it for a creative skill. I am just about to reorganize my whole room <laughs> in the next few weeks. I'm gonna add another bookshelf, I'm gonna change my creative workspace, and since my room, my bedroom, is now the place that I work all day every day, I want to make it into a, a creative space that makes me excited to work. So I'm pretty soon gonna start the class. Make your creative space a simple and inspiring guide by Mimi Chow, which talks all about creating an area that is creative space to enable you to complete all of your work to the best of your ability. There's no ads on Skillshare, there's always new classes being launched and I genuinely cannot recommend Skillshare enough as a place to develop your creative skills. So make sure you go check out the link in the bio as the first 1000 of you will get one month free of Skillshare which is such an amazing deal. Okay, now that the sponsorship is done, let's talk about the books. It's a lot of fantasies and when I feel the fantasy, it is my reality. Fantasy is by far my most owned genre. It counts for about half of my unread books are in fantasy. So this is the big, big section. And then we're going to get into all the kind of little genres <laughs> after that. But yeah, fantasy, we have got a lot of books to go through. So let's go. Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron. Pages and Co, Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales by Anna James. The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. <laughs> She's not gonna go there. Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. Over the Woodward Wall and Along the Salt I See by A. Deborah Baker, AKA Sean and Maguire. The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna. Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray. Defy the Night by Bridget Kemmerer. Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. This is one of my like most gorgeous editions of anything that I own. These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. The Gilded Walls by Roshani Chotsky. This is a series I really want to start. Like I, I really want to start it. If there's any kind of series, fantasy series, I want to begin soon, this is it. The King of Crows by Libba Bray, a series I very much 
need to finish. <laughs> Next we've got quite a few Lee Bardugos. So we've got The Language of Thorns and The Lives of Saints by Lee Bardugo. These are both kind of like short story collections. And we have King of Scars and Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. I'm very excited to start this duology. And then I have The Dragon Republic and The Burning God by I.F. Quang. Probably two of the most intimidating books on my TBR. The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stevewater. The Obelisk Gate and The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. Under the Whispering Door by T.J. Clune, Uprooted by Naomi Novik, A Dark Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, Star Daughter by Shweta Shakar, another one of my favourite editions of anything that I own, The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon, Snow White Lens Witchcraft by Theodora Goss, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas, ah, another one I've owned for a long time and like I'm just too scared to start. Start Sarah J Maas in general. Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor, Drowned Country by Emily Tesh, The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rubinowski, Alatsue by Darcy Little Badger, Law by Alexandra Bracken, Circe by Madeline Miller, now one of the oldest books on my TBR that I've owned for the longest time, A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth, The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page, The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow, The Deep by River Solomon, Dark and Shallow Lies by Ginny Myers Sane, Witches Steeping Gold by Shannon Smart, The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed, The Book of Magic by Alice Hoffman, Sisters of the Snake by Serena and Sasha Nanua, Fireborn by Aisling Flower, Where Are the Drowned Girls Go by Shul Maguire. I just need to read this soon. I am so excited to have an arc of this one. The Library of the Unwritten by AJ Hackwith, Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor, and finally, The Young Elites by Marie Lu. That is all of my fantasy books. As you can see, it takes up so much of my TBR. That was a lot, that was a lot. I have a lot of fantasy books to read. Wait a minute. I'm figuring this out. I'm like Scooby and Shaggy, I'm solving a mystery. Okay, so next is all the mystery books. So if you watch my channel, you know mystery is probably now my favorite genre, but there's not a ton of releases that are pure mystery, what I would call a mystery book. Not a thriller, a mystery. But if it comes out, you best believe I'm gonna get it. So these are all my mystery books, and this is probably, this and Thriller are probably tied as my second most owned genre. We have got Dead Dead Girls by Nikiza Afia, The Appeal by Janice Hallett, The Christie Affair by Nina de Gramont, Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley, Pride and Premeditation by Terza Price, In the Hall with the Knife, A Clue Mystery by Diana Peterfreund, The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman, The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. I've never actually read anything by Karen M. McManus, so let me know if you think I would enjoy her stuff. As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson, The Dinner Guest by B.P. Walter, Murder Most Unladylike by Robin Stevens, The Sinclair's Mysteries, The Jeweled Moth by Catherine Woodfine, Midwinter Murder by Agatha Christie, Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. I have actually read this already, but I'm going to reread it when it comes to the point in the Erky Poirot series that I'm reading chronologically. Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie, The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie, 450 from Paddington by Agatha Christie, The Dance of the Serpents by Oscar de Muriel, Nine Elms by Robert Brinesder, Marion Lane and the Midnight Murder by T.A. Wilberg, and Shiver by Ali Reynolds. I was ooing, I was awing, I was wincing, I was LOLing quite heartily. Next are thrillers, which like I said, is probably like tied with mystery is my second most owned genre. I do tend to class them as separate genres. We have got Other People's Clothes by Kala Henkel, Sleep by C.L. Taylor, The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen, Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty, The Darkest Hearts by Dan Smith, The Good Mother by Kim Locke, A Place to Lie by Rebecca Griffiths, The Guilty One by Lisa Ballantyne, The Couple Next Door by Shari Lapina, The Burning Girls by C.J. Tudor. <laughs> I always get C.J. Tudor and C.L. Taylor mixed up. When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean. Girl in the Walls by A.J. Ganuse, another one I wanna hopefully get to soon. The Memory Wood by Sam Lloyd. Not A Happy Family by Shari Lapina. The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Survive the Night by Riley Sager, something that hasn't got the best reviews. Bit nervous, bit nervous about this one. Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty. Everything We Didn't Say by Nicole Bart. Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. The Neighbor's Secret by L. Allison Heller. And finally, The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. Ah, that's history. <laughs> so next is historical. I love books that are historical fiction. You'll notice probably that a lot of my books in fantasy or mystery 
are historical, but I would say fantasy or mystery is their primary genre. These are the books I would say historical fiction is like the number one primary thing going on with this book. So we have got The Savage Instinct by M.M. DeLuca, The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner, Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, Theatre of Marvels by Leanne Dillsworth, The Perishing by Natasha Dion, Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead, The Lincoln Highway by Amor Towles, The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry, Atonement by Ian McEwan, Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel, another one that is probably one of the oldest ones on my TBR, but I have put it off because of its length. It's like 640 pages of dense, dense historical fiction. Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood, Lovely War by Julie Berry, The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis. I've actually never read anything from Ruta Sepetis and I've always wanted to. And The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. Not a joke, just a fact. Not a joke, just a fact. Not a joke, just a fact. <laughs> So I'm kind of going in order of size of genres of how many books I have for that genre. So next is nonfiction. I have always loved reading nonfiction, but I think with making reading vlogs, it can be hard to fit them all in. So a lot of these have actually been on my TBR for quite a while, but hopefully I'll start getting to more nonfiction soon. She says, I mean, I've always been saying that. Don't know how good I'm gonna be at it. We have got The Radium Girls by Kate Moore, Biased by Jennifer Eberhardt, Families Don't Wear Pink and Other Lies, which is an anthology and it is curated by Scarlett Curtis, Bookshops of Britain by Louise Boland, Haven't You Heard by Marie Leconte, Forgotten Women the Writers by Zing Xiang, The Tree of Yoga by BK Asayenga, The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander, Save the Cat Writes a Novel by Jessica Brody, The Devil and the White City by Eric Larson, I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara, Crippled Austerity and the Demonization of Disabled People by Frances Ryan, Essex Girls by Sarah Perry, Feminism for the 99% A Manifesto, Educated by Tara Westover, Not That Bad, edited by Roxane Gay, Down and Out in Paris and London by George Orwell, Disfigured of Fairy Tales, Disability and Making Space by Amanda LeDuc, and Heart of the Race of Black Women's Life in Britain by Beverly Bryant, Stella Dizidi and Suzanne Scaff. What I die, what a die, what I die. Okay, so In Contemporary is a mix of like YA contemporary books and also kind of adult contemporary that is often seen as like literary fiction or general fiction. So we have The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel, The Disassembly of Doreen Durand by Ryan Collett, Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. I need to read this soon, you know, I just need to read this book soon. Tiny Pretty Things by Sonia Chirai Procter and Danielle Clayton, Moxie by Jennifer Matthew, Love and Other Natural Disasters by Misa Seguria, Grown by Tiffany D. Jack Jackson, Tyler Johnson Was Here by Jay Coles, What Mama Left Me by Renee Watson, Shine by Jessica Jung, My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell, Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo, and Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender. A classic. Classic. Not debatable. Not up for debate. Next to classics, which I never read. <laughs> Some of my favorite editions here are classics. I want to collect the Penguin Cloth Bound editions. I want to collect some editions of Jane Austen but I don't read them currently. So we need to correct that, but hey ho, let's just go through the books. Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. No Surrender by Constance Maud. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. One I keep saying I'm gonna read and then I don't. <laughs> Emma by Jane Austen. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. Villette by Charlotte Bronte. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. And The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle. Scared. Okay, horror. We're gonna listen. You, you can skip this section if you wanted because I literally did a video on all the horror books on my TBR a couple videos ago and it's barely changed. So we have got Hashtag Murder Trending by Gretchen McNeil, the book I'm gonna be reading with my patrons this month for our book club. A lot of interesting views on it already. I'm a bit scared to read this one. And The Trees Crept In by Dawn Kurtigich. Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. The Final Girls Support Group by Grady Hendrix. The Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas. Hashtag No Escape by Gretchen McNeil. Horrid by Katrina Leno. Pine by Francine Toon. The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starlin. And The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. Just need a bit of space if that's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We are into the last few genres now. We're into genres that I don't have a ton of books for. So science fiction. We have got Kings of a Dead World by Jamie Mollett. Moon of the Crusted Snow by Wabig Shig Rice. The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He, one of my favorite covers ever. Terminal Boredom by Izumi Suzuki. Waking Gods and Only Human by Sylvain Nouvelle. And The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. Yeah, love. 
I don't know if I know what love is. You guys know I don't read a ton of romance, but I'm starting to get more and more into it as I as I evolve as a human being. So the romance that I have is The X Hex by Erin Starling, The Sweetest Remedy by Jane Icaro, Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade, After Love by Tanya Byrne, and Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. So these four books I class as magical realism, fabulism, surrealism, they all fall under that kind of bracket. We have got Switch by A.S. King, Split Tooth by Tanya Tagak, and Wild Beauty and the Mirror Season by Anna Marie McCormore. But she's beautiful. <laughs> and finally, graphic novels. I only currently own three graphic novels. I definitely want to own more, but we have got Sheets by Brenna Thumner. This is about a ghost. <laughs> this one is called Rusty Brown. I literally know nothing about it. My dad got it for me. It's this massive graphic novel. I don't know. I don't know when I'm gonna read this. Sorry, dad. <laughs> and The Tea Dragon Tapestry by Kay O'Neill. Oh my God, you guys, I am hot. I am stressed. I am sweaty. I have no idea how long this video is gonna be. I am so sorry, but that is all of my unread books. That is every single book I own currently that I have not read. So you need to let me know down below, love it or hate it, which ones you would want me to read and which ones you really don't think I should read, but I'm probably gonna to anyway if it comes up as a prompt. But it'll be interesting to see which ones in the comments you guys just haven't enjoyed generally. If you've gotten into the end of this video, comment a sleepy emoji because I'm so tired after filming that video. I really enjoy going back through my books and just really seeing everything that I own. I think it gives me a greater appreciation for the books I own and makes me want to read them more. So I would really recommend doing that if you own a lot of books. Just get them all out and look at them all. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was fun to see all of my unread books and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye!